Hey friend, thanks for popping in. I got a great verse for you today and no, I'm never going to run out of them. There's so many good ones. Uh, today I want to minister to you from Acts 12, 21, 12, 21 for December 21st. Those of you who might watch this today. Uh, it's the story of Herod. Now it's a little bit morbid, uh, but I think it's appropriate for the days that we are living in. This is what it says. It says on an appointed day, Herod, having put on his royal apparel, those are his good clothes, having put on his royal apparel, he took his seat on the rostrum and began delivering an address to them. Well, the people kept crying out, the voice of a God and not a man. And instantly an angel of the Lord struck him. And uh, because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. You see, Steve, that's gross. Yes. And it's also New Testament. Many people have this idea that the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are two totally different guys. You know, this one, you know, he's tough. He's severe. You know, he'll kill people. He he'll, he deals with situations. And this new one, you know, he's kind of like Santa Claus. You know, it's all about gifts. Friends, I want you to know God has never changed. God still deals with people today. There's still judgment in the New Testament times. You look at the life of, look at the story of Ananias and Sapphira. They dealt with the severity of God. You look at this story of Herod and you'll find out God knows how to deal with people. And he doesn't have a problem dealing with people who liked to play God. And that's the kind of guy that Herod was. You know, he had big clothes. He had big influence. He had uh, big speeches. He, it says there he had a big chair. Uh, and he's speaking to this big crowd. And he thinks he's so amazing. And they think he's so amazing. And he's in, in just enjoying all of their praise and all of their worship until he has a suddenly, until he has an instantly, until God decides, you know what? You're done breathing. And friends, I want you to know I'm not afraid for the church right now nearly as much as I am afraid for leaders who are trying to play God. Because when God decides you're done breathing, when God decides to pull you down, to kick you off your high horse, you're coming down. That is the absolute fact. And it doesn't matter how nice your clothes are, how big your chair is, how big your crowds are, how many followers you have on Instagram. It doesn't matter if you have a hundred million dollars in the bank. If God says, I'm not giving you another breath, you don't get one. You don't get one. And so recognize, friends, that as we come into these seemingly dark and horrible days, okay? And this is the evil day. The Bible says, put on the full armor of God that you can stand, that you can resist in the evil day. Yes, God's calling you to resist. Are you resisting in the evil day? I'm resisting in the evil day. But you need to know, don't be afraid for yourself. If you're a child of God, I'm not afraid for myself. I am very likely going to come through this victoriously with amazing stories. And even if I suffer, even if I go through challenges, even if I die, okay, I'm going to be okay. You need to know life is short. Ask anybody with white hair. Life is short. In a few more steps, we're going to be out of the rain. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about yourself if you're a believer and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you who I'm afraid for. I'm afraid for people who are trying to play God right now. I'm afraid for leaders who think that they can get away with anything because of the place that they're in. And so, friends, we've got to... We've got to be trusting in the Lord. Trust in God in these times. Uh, God, I'm careful how I say this, but God is way more in charge than you would realize. Now, I'm not saying God's in control of everything. If he was, there wouldn't be hate or murder or lust or, or rape or poverty. There wouldn't be sin. If God was in control of everything, the world would be different. I'm not saying he's controlling everything, but I'll tell you something. God is sovereign. And God, uh, what that means is he's in charge way more than you realize. He'll often allow things to go so far and then he drops the hammer. And suddenly the, there's a wake up call to the world uh, where God says, uh, oh, maybe you forgot, but I'm God and you're not. And so don't be afraid. 
Don't be afraid. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for breakthrough. Let's press in for more of God. But do not be afraid in these times. God is way more in charge, way more sovereign that you will, than you would ever realize. Daniel 4, 17, the Most High is sovereign over all the kingdoms on earth. And he gives them to anyone he wishes. And he sets over them the lowliest of men. God's looking for lowly men right now. He's looking for the humble ones. Those who submit themselves to him. Who submit their hearts to him. He's looking for them to raise them up. To use them powerfully in these days. As we lead, come up to this fast coming. Friends, fasting is a wonderful way to humble yourself before God. The, Dan, uh, uh, David said, I humble my soul with fasting. Prepare yourself for the evil day. Prepare yourself for what's coming down the pipe. God wants to trust you with his glory. Don't be worried about God. Don't be worried about yourself. God knows how to deal with ugly situations, ugly times, evil times. And he knows how to deal with leaders who like to play God. I hope that was a blessing to you. I hope it encourages you. Share if you dare. We'll see you soon.